you know, you were talking about complex PTSD. I don't think people understand the difference between C PTSD mm. or complex PTSD and PTSD. The term PTSD gets thrown around a lot, right? So if somebody feels super triggered in a circumstance, they're yes. going to say, oh my God, I totally have PTSD from this. Right. And I think it's really important if we're going to do this series together, really educating people. So we start yeah. right there. So in your opinion, professional opinion, what is the difference between PTSD Mm -hmm. And C, PTSD, or what's known as complex PTSD. Yeah, I love that. And I will even back up and say that that's a thing that even there's resistance and a lack of information, even in the helping community, because CPSD is not its own diagnosis in the right. DSM. And so I think a lot of people don't even on the practitioner side, fully understand what this means and the differences of it. It's kind of like how everything was just sort of autism. Everyone has this. And now we understand it's a spectrum of experiences and what Perfect. that looks like. And right. so now I think we understand that there is something that happens. So what I think about trauma and there's obviously we could go big T, little T, and I'm sure people that are listening to this have heard that before too. When we think about trauma, there's a sort of base level understanding of what a traumatic event might be. So we think about major things like losing your home in a natural disaster, sexual abuse, rape. There's these big things that could happen to somebody that automatically we all sort of code that as that would be traumatic. Right. When I think about big T, I think about the things we've sort of universally or at least culturally accepted that anyone that hears that's going to go, that's trauma. The little t traumas, in my opinion, are the things that might hit at that same level as a big T, but not mm -hmm. everyone's going to see it that way. So it's something that someone else might be like, well, that doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal, but it was to you. Like I, when I got in a car accident, when I was in my master's program and somebody hit me with a stat of like, well, base, I think it was like 50 some percent of everyone driving a car in the U S is going to get into some sort of major accident in their life. And it was like, that, what do you want me to do with that information? And then they're like, well, you know, nothing really happened. You got to go home. You didn't have any major issues. Your car was, you got all the money, you got a new car, like people trying to make it better. And I was driving in winter in Wisconsin, which anybody that has ever driven in wintry conditions, it's not great. And sort of the expectation, like I should be fine because everyone goes through this and it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. But that was so traumatic to me. It took me months to be able to drive. And even now, I mean, we're, 12, 13 years out, I still have to go through my sort of hypervigilant responses and I have to like navigate how to not let myself get keyed up to get into a car when there's going to be snow on the ground. So that's kind of how I think about trauma. Now, when we think about what it does to the brain and again, what you're describing, which is it's not necessarily the event, it's the way that your brain experiences it and your body experiences yeah. it. And I kind of, I guess, hit on that with the accident. But what I think about is essentially, if your brain is going in a direction, when you experience trauma, you, part of your brain gets kind of shattered and then sent into different directions and it doesn't quite know how to move forward. And mm -hmm. now there's this vigilance that's created a sort of distrust of yourself, a distrust of the world. There's a change. It's almost like somebody smeared your glasses and no matter how much you work, you can never get that smear off. You can't unsee whatever happens. I always say it changes the filter through which you see life. Exactly. Exactly. So if somebody has PTSD related to a specific event or a series of events that happen, but it sort of gets categorized as sort of one experience, one unit, think about that. But I think I just, I'm getting older. I'm getting more floaters. I don't know if you have those, but yeah. like the little floaters in your eyes. Well, I've gotten more recently and I went and saw my eye doctor and I was really panicked. And he's like, I think it's just age that you're at a point where some of them happen. I'm not concerned about it. And you will adjust to them over time. You will learn how to see without them bothering you as much. Mm. So with somebody that has PTSD, as they're working their recovery, they move through it, provided there aren't any more major big T, little T trauma events, they start to learn how to see through that sponge. It gets integrated a little bit more. They learn how to navigate through it. It still is housed in the body. There's still a cellular change that happened in the body. There might be certain things that key them up. 
fireworks, loud sounds. That's a big one for people long term, even if your trauma had nothing to do with a loud event, but just something that triggers you to hypervigilance. But if while you're learning how to deal with that smudge, somebody comes and wipes a new smudge and then there's another smudge and then there's another smudge and you're constantly kind of jarred with the fact that you can't predict when the next smudge is going to happen and how it's going to affect you. Your brain never has any time to sort of recalibrate and to Mm. get a steady state again. Mm -hmm. So now... And sort of the snowball effect. And I think about kind of action potentials in the brain and neuronal firing where when your neurons fire, they need time to recharge, to come back up to baseline. For somebody that's experienced complex PTSD, basically think about it like the neurons being expected to fire because there's constantly a signal. There's constantly something that could happen without that rest state. So your brain is acting in the red all the time. 